you are now listening to the Gregor Gaming Experience TM. Today, Wargaming fixes the destroyer meta by adding more destroyers. Alright, auf geht's everybody, welcome to the Gregor Gaming Experience, I hope you're doing well. German destroyers are now on the way to rule of warships, and I'm gonna give you a look at them from a historical and predicted gameplay point of view. Let's get into it. To start things off with a general overview of how these ships function, right? They generally have very good torpedo range, torpedo speed, and torpedo reload times. The ships of the Imperial German Navy have torpedo tubes that face forwards. So that's one really interesting quirk that would allow you to set up ambushes and stuff like that at low tiers. Pretty good seal clubbers. Uh, but fitting, considering they were labeled torpedo boats. They weren't destroyers in name, really. Later through the line, though, another interesting quirk that comes up is gun caliber. Uh, for destroyers, they carry pretty big guns, tier 6 and onwards. 128 millimeter cannons, and in some instances, even 150 mil cannons. The late tier ships also mount very good AA defenses due to their usage of dual purpose guns. So these ships function a lot like smaller cruisers with potent destroyer hunting abilities as well as a great capability in the role of a support ship, accompanying big bad battleships and things of the like. That's a general idea though, now I'm gonna get into specifics. From tier 2 to tier 10, let's start. The V-25 class was the most numerous of the Imperial German Navy's torpedo boats, with 71 of these ships being built in total. 32 of them being sunk over the course of the war. They were so numerous that the ships were upgraded gradually the further down the production line they went. Due to a British blockade during the war, many of these ships didn't see service, though some of them did participate in the famous Battle of Jutland, with a couple of them being turned over to the US and the British at the war's end. The main armament consists of, initially, 88mm guns in single mounts, one forward, two aft, they're all placed center line on the ship. Later, these guns would be replaced with three 105 mil guns. The torpedo armament consisted of eight 500 mm torpedo tubes in two separate mountings. Top speed was 33 and a half knots and upwards under some circumstances, but the minimum value is pretty quick in and of itself. So these ships seem like fun tier two seal clubbers with lots of torpedoes and being able to fire forwards is really cool. Pretty straight up. Moving on, tier three. The G-101 ships were ordered for the Argentine Navy, but when World War I broke out, Germany sent a letter saying, Psych! We're putting these ships into our Navy instead. The ships were labeled destroyers as opposed to torpedo boats. All four of the ships built were present at the Battle of Jutland. The main armament consisted of four 105mm cannons with six 500mm torpedo tubes, top speed a little over 33.5 knots. Like its predecessor at Tier 2, the ship is very straightforward. I imagine they'll play almost identically to each other. Moving on to Tier 4. There's not a lot of history to the V-170. All six of them that were actually constructed were laid down in 1918, but never finished construction. The end of the war brought the project to an end. Main armament, four 105mm cannons and six 500mm torpedoes, just like the G-101, but with an increased top speed at 35 knots. Again. There's not a lot that's different about this ship from Tier 2 or Tier 3 that precedes it. The torpedo tubes can face forwards, as I've said several times, which I'm sure would give the player a lot of avenues to ambush enemies with. But you can figure out how to play these ships fairly easily. That's the last of the Imperial German Navy, though. At Tier 5, we get into the Nazi design machines. So, moving on. The T-22 represents one of 15 completed Elbing-class so-called fleet torpedo boats employed by the Kriegsmarine. They were support ships through and through, meant to serve in flotillas, often as escort ships. Eleven of the 15 ships were lost during the war, but despite some machinery reliability issues, they proved to be effective fighting vessels, and they sunk a number of British and Canadian cruisers and destroyers. Main armament consists of four 105mm cannons with a small complement of AA guns consisting of four 37mm and 920mm cannons. Torpedo armament is potent with six 533mm torpedo tubes. Top speed 32.5 knots with a very, very good concealment rating. The ship will have to rely on speed and stealth to make torpedo runs against unsuspecting targets, I imagine. But I don't think the guns are going to do a whole lot for it, and they're going to serve as useful in dire circumstances almost exclusively. The German destroyers get a little more beef at the next tier, though. Let's go to tier 6. And Skit. This ship is another paper design with some interesting armament choices. For a destroyer, it's pretty big. 
The main armament consists of a choice between four 128mm cannons or four 150s. It will have AA guns, but not very many of them, with two 37mm cannons and single mounts and four quadruple mounted 20 mils as well as four single mounted 20 mils. Max speed is pretty good at 36 knots, so the artillery of the ship is pretty good, and I imagine the ship would be quite versatile. It can harass a wide number of ship classes while making usage of its torpedoes to take down bigger fish if it has to. As the tier 5, good concealment values. Now let's go to tier 7. Z1 Liebrich's Mass, I hope I pronounced that right, was the first of the four 1934 type destroyers of the Kriegsmarine. The ship faced a complicated history though, with many redesigns to fix its reliability and seaworthiness problems. These issues were fixed before 1939, and they served to be pretty robust warships. Liebrich Mass, in particular, participated in an unsuccessful attack on a Polish naval base, and eventually was sunk either by naval mines or bombs on the 22nd of February in 1940. The ship had five single-mounted 127mm guns, with two quadruple torpedo tubes carrying the typical 533mm torpedoes of several ships earlier in the line. Again, it has some AA capability with two twin-barrel 37mm cannons and six 20 mils. Main speed, again, pretty quick at 36 knots. As ships previous, the reasonably powerful armament gives this vessel good harassing capabilities. It's also rather large for a destroyer and is a little bit tougher than her counterparts, though that would only be helpful to a certain point. It is a destroyer, you're not going to take a whole lot of shells. Moving on to tier 8, probably my favorite ship in the line. Z-23 of the Narvik class, probably the most well known in this line as it stands. The Narvik class destroyers were powerful machines despite certain reliability problems. They were more like light cruisers than destroyers. Eight of them were built in total, with only a handful surviving through the war. Lead ship Z-23 was badly damaged by a bomb in 1944, and decommissioned shortly afterwards. It was given to the French that eventually scrapped. The ship's main armament is very high caliber for a destroyer, mounting four 150mm cannons in one twin and two single mounts. In terms of AA, it exists to a certain capacity in the form of two twin 37mm cannons. Whether or not there were plans to add more AA remains to be seen. In terms of torpedo armament, still quite powerful, like the preceding ships, two quadruple tube torpedo launchers firing 533mm torpedoes. Max speed, 36 knots. I imagine this ship to be one of the more powerful vessels in the line. It has a potent mix of artillery and torpedo arms to make it into a very versatile warship. So, let's finish the video with the final tiers. Z-46 is another paper ship. It would have been one of five ship classes built as direct upgrades to the Narviks. Z-46 was one of two that were actually started in construction. Uh, these ships would have been used as anti-aircraft platforms. They were meant to mount six dual-purpose 128mm Flak 40 cannons in complement to a large number of smaller caliber guns solely dedicated to AA. I imagine speed and maneuvering characteristics would be similar to the Narvik that precedes it at Tier 8. There's not a lot to gripe about with this ship in my opinion. You get a set of what I imagine would be very fast firing powerful cannons to shoot at enemy ships and it'd eviscerate enemy aircraft, very similar then to the Akizuki class destroyer that Japan has at tier 8. Let's finish up at tier 10. Part of a test bed of 1942 destroyers, Z-52 was one of five of these planned ships, cancelled in 1944. The ship's very similar to the preceding Tier 9 in terms of stats, or at least I imagine it would be from what I can see here. The first design of these vessels, Z-51, was planned to equip the 128mm Flak 40s of the Tier 9. In addition to three 55mm Garret 58 anti-aircraft guns with a close-end complement of 14 37mm guns in seven twin mounts. In addition to that, the familiar eight 533mm torpedo tubes, max speed over 36 knots. This ship will be a very powerful tier 10. You already had a good vessel in the tier 9, but the additional AA that this ship gets in my opinion really helps round it out. It also represents everything to like about the later tier German destroyers. Good artillery, good torpedoes, good maneuvering. I, I really don't see what's not to like here. Um, but that's all I have to say about the German destroyers as they stand now. I'm really excited to see these ships in action. They're going to flesh out the German tree really well in my opinion. I also welcome the addition of some more well-rounded destroyers to the mix rather than a set of one-trick ponies. I'm particularly interested in the Tier 8 Narvik and the two N-Tier dual-purpose gun destroyers. I think those are going to be very versatile ships and useful in rank play to a certain extent. 
Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Wargaming does with the Destroyer meta here on out. We're also going to see some dramatic changes to the Soviet Destroyers in 2017. But that's about all I have for you now. So, Space Cadets, next up, I'll be giving you an idea of what the Italian and French cruiser lines will look like when they're eventually implemented, as well as content regarding Soviet battleships and Soviet destroyers and how they're going to change those. So, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, it really, really does go a long way, and be sure to subscribe for my Italian and French cruisers video when that comes up. Until then, I'm Gregor, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all starside. Let's just hope Wargaming doesn't screw this one up. If you're curious about Italian or French ships, be sure to subscribe to the Gregor Gaming Experience TM for that video when it comes out. We'll also be covering World of Spaceships, commonly known as Dreadnought, and others. Thanks again for tuning in.